What is up YouTube? Today we're doing a video that's a little bit different, just a little different. You know, we're going to be doing an analysis of Lil Baby's new song, The Bigger Picture. And through this analysis, hopefully you'll see why the Lil Baby is a better poet than an awful lot of you. Rappers are poets, and hopefully through this you'll see exactly why. And before I get started, make sure to like, subscribe, comment below if you want more stuff like this. You can even comment below if there's a new song from a rapper that you want me to analyze and pick apart the poetic elements, the literary devices, things like that, and I will be sure to do it, okay? So, like, subscribe, comment below. Without further ado, let's get started. The main message here, the main message the main, here. that they want to see those officers involved. They want to see those officers arrested. Officers arrested. Okay, so right off the bat, Lil Baby uses news reports as the intro. From that alone, I can clearly see that this song is a documentary poem. Now, in case you don't know what a documentary poem is, it's when you use primary source material to lay the foundation for the poem or song that's about to follow. And in this case, the primary source material would be news reports. You could hear the voices of like news anchors or journalists, and you can even hear the I can't breathe, I can't breathe. If you actually watch the music video itself, you can see that it's not only audio, but there's visual source material showing, you know, protests and things like that. Let's keep going. My four by four, four GC3 ain't no more by seeing what I seen. I guess that me hold him down if he say he can't breathe. It's too many long to get even. Throw us in cages like dogs and hyenas. I went to court and they sent me to piss. First I was drunk, then I sobered up quick when I heard all that time and they gave it to Ali. Every color person ain't dumb. And all whites not racist. So in this initial part of the first verse, he does an awful lot that I would suggest you as writers do. He starts off by saying, I find it crazy the police will shoot you and know that you dead but still tell you to freeze. Here he is using dramatic irony. The irony in this case is that cops actually do this. They will shoot someone dead and still tell them to freeze, tell them to put their hands up, tell them not to move. Well, of course, they can't do any of those things. You've killed them. So there's dramatic irony that he starts off with. He later goes on to say, I guess that mean hold him down if he say he can't breathe. He does not explicitly say who the he is because he trusts the intelligence of the audience to know who he's talking about. Considering the times that we're in, considering the times in which this song came out, we know he's talking about George Floyd. And he might also be referring to Eric Garner, though. He could be referring to any number of people, technically, who died this way due to police brutality. And that's the beauty in not saying the name. In trusting the audience to know who you're talking about, you also open up the possibility of various interpretations. He doesn't specify who it is. So it could be George Floyd, who it likely is, but it could also be Eric Garner or anybody else. It could even be like black people in general who feel like they can't breathe because of the oppressive system uh, placed on them. He says, throw us in cages like dogs and hyenas. Throw us in cages, referencing being thrown into jail, like dogs and hyenas, a simile to compare people thrown in jail to animals. He later says, I went to court and they sent me to prison. My mama was crushed when they said I can't leave. First I was drunk, then I sobered up when I heard all that time that they gave to Talib. Now the sobered up here is actually a double entendre. A double entendre is when you have any one word or phrase have two different meanings. So the sobered up quick can mean, I saw how much time they gave to my friend, in prison, so I stopped getting drunk so as not to get in trouble with crime. But sobered up quick here can also just mean getting my act together. So there's a double entendre there. And then later on, he says, every colored person ain't dumb, all whites not racist. He's adding a level of nuance to the situation by saying, it's not simply a black and white perspective that you should have. You can't say these people are right or these people are right. There's a lot of gray involved. Let's keep going. When he starts really just addressing the audience directly, he says, I can see in your eye that you fed up with the things that are going on in the nation. He also uses a colloquialism that's common among black people, stare in the mirror whenever you drive, which specifically means look into the rear mirror as you're driving in case of a cop so you can make sure to be extra careful. He's really saying this to show care for his loved ones, like please be careful, make sure to look in your rear view mirror in case of a cop. So there's a colloquialism used there. He later on says, I see blue lights, I get scared and start running. Blue lights in this case can be a synecdoche or a metonymy. Now a synecdoche is when a part of something is used to represent the whole. So blue lights in this case could be representing the police car as a whole. 
and he's again trusting the intelligence of the audience as all poets should do. Blue Lights could also be a metonymy in the sense that Blue Lights is not directly a part of a policeman, but it's still related enough to a policeman that if you say Blue Lights, people think of police. And in case you were wondering, a metonymy is when something is used to represent something else that's related to it. I know that sounded weird, but just... You get it, you get it. He also uses multisyllabic rhyming. Rappers specifically will call that multis. Multisyllabic rhyming can be seen in protect us, arrest us, neglect us, respect us. Did you notice that the syllables in each word rhymed? So that's something that he utilizes. And I would highly suggest that if any of you poets uh, want to rhyme in your poems, don't make it as simple as cat, bat, fat, sat. Add some complexity, add some flavor to the rhymes. Make multiple syllables rhyme. Yeah, we didn't have a hell of Okay, so remember the nuance that I described when he said that all colored people ain't dumb, all whites not racist? He was saying there, you know, don't simply have a black and white perspective of like, these people are right, these people are wrong. Well, he makes that clear again because he circles back to that fact and saying it's bigger than black and white. Black and white here is a double entendre for like, it's bigger than black people versus white people. Like that's not the whole situation It's bigger than that. But he's also saying your perspective should be larger than a black or white perspective of like hard lined. This is right. This is wrong. You know what I'm saying? Let us keep going. Okay. Wow, this second verse, he just jumps right in. Again, he's using multisyllabic rhyming. He's saying frontline, gunline, sunshine, crunch time. And again, that, that just adds flavor. You don't want these boring rhymes if you're gonna use it as a poet. I know not all poets today like to rhyme, that's fine. But if you are going to, don't make it boring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He goes on to say, Corrupted police been the problem where I'm from, but I'd be lying if I said it was all of them. So again, he keeps circling back to the idea that it's not just black and white police are bad, period, point blank. He's saying, no, I know there are some good ones out there. And by adding this nuance, he's forcing the audience to look at the bigger picture. Some of y'all are finally like, oh, I get it, the bigger picture. That's why he called it that, yeah. And hopefully that aids y'all in picking out titles for your poems. Look at whatever trend is consistent within your work. And from there, have your title encapsulate that trend. Ooh, okay, so in that remaining part of the second verse, he actually admits to his own glorification of the violence and the drug crimes that exist in our nation. He says, I can't lie like I don't rap about killing and dope, but he still says, I'm telling my youngins to vote. So he's still trying to make a change somehow, whether it be through his kids or through his own actions. By doing that, you make the speaker far more interesting if they're not simply pointing fingers like they are the problem. He's also saying, no, I am part of the problem as well. And by doing that while simultaneously relating to the audience, you force the audience to also look at their possible complicity and the struggles that they're facing. And then later on, he says, we ain't taking no more. Let us go from them chain. Chain being a metaphor for institutional bondage or lack of freedom. And then he says, God bless their souls, every one of their names. Names in this case is a euphemism for lives lost. Euphemisms are often used if you don't want to sound too heavy handed in the words you're saying. So names can just be victims. Okay, in this third verse specifically, especially in the initial part I just played, he is really communicating to the audience directly. He says he's venting, but he's also talking directly to the audience. He's saying, what happened to COVID? Nobody remembers, right? So I know all these protests are going on and that's what the news is focusing on, but keep in mind, there's still a pandemic going on. He's, he's giving the audience a reality check. And then he later relates to the audience by saying, look, there's some things I can't say, there's some things I can't do, but there's some things you can do. He said, there's people who can, here's the chance. So he's saying, I'll take a stand for what I believe, but I'm also mobilizing you as my fans, as, as the audience to go out and make a change yourselves. Okay, and then he ends the third verse by making allusions, historical allusions, to figures in the past who 
worked hard and died for the rights that he currently has. So this could be people from the civil rights movement or even before that. But he does make a particular allusion to Martin Luther King. Listen closely. Our people died for us to be free. What do you mean this was a dream? Where he is now in time is the dream being fulfilled, essentially. Martin Luther King's dream. The problem with the whole way of life can change overnight. All right, that's pretty much the end of the song. Look, I would highly encourage every single one of y'all to go watch this music video because it gives you a different kind of respect uh, for this song. Lil Baby's a real poet, like he's a poet poet. Please like, subscribe, comment below if you want more stuff like this. Deuces.